Hi, welcome back to my art channel. I'm G, and in this video I'm showing you how to draw a purple crocus using watercolour markers. And the flower that I'm going to paint for you is the top one in this composition, and you can see the reference photo I used there to draw everything out. And the line work is done with a Faber-Castell watercolour pencil, so that when I've got all of the paints on, the lines won't really show so much. I'll paint the whole thing eventually, but for this video I'm just going to show you how to do that flower in the top of the three. And the first thing that I do is go straight in with my first colour, which is Quinacridone Magenta. And I'm using the Winsor & Newton watercolour markers here because they've got a nice fine brush tip. And there's some very delicate areas on this flower that I need to try and be able to get into. Then I also use a Dioxazine Violet. Uh, and I plunk a little bit of that sparingly on top of the magenta. And immediately you can see me go in with a sable brush and some water and start to blend and mix those two colours together. And I'm doing my usual thing of starting on a very, very small part of the composition just in case anything goes wrong. And the paper that I'm using for this flower is the um, Langton by De La Rowney. It's the cold press 300 GSM thick watercolour paper. And that's because the original paper I chose to do this painting on actually started to stain when I applied the colours. So I had to switch over to use a different kind of paper. More on the staining later. But here you can see me starting on my second petal. And it's again the same blend of that magenta and that violet together. And then a little bit of um, water to blend them together using this size 3 sable brush. So it's a fairly small brush because I'm still working within quite a small area and on a small petal. And I'm just putting in some light bits of clean water here just to soften and smudge and fuzzy the edges so I don't get a really strong fuzzy line. Oh, and here you can see me transferring some paint that was already on the brush so that I can do that very, very pale inside curl of that particular petal. And here you can see me add a bit too much clean water and what it starts to do is push that pigment back and away, revealing some of the pens that have actually stained this paper as well. There you go, I'm just like pointing that out. Uh, but that's something I'm not worried about right now because I'm going to deal with that later. So moving on, I'm doing a bigger, bigger petal here so you can see me add a big sort of swash of, of this um, quinacrino magenta. And I'm not being too fussy with it. You can see my slap it on. It's very sketchy. I'm not being fussy at all at this point. Now I'm using the size 3 brush again to blend these two colours together and move that mixed pigment around the inside of this petal. This petal looks very, very dark on the reference photo. Um, it's kind of like the edge of the petal is coming up like you can see the first part that I painted and it's a bit of a hood so it casts a nice shadow down across the petal. And it was at this point that I realised that the size 3 sable can only hold so much water for blending and moving on this particular large area. So at some points you'll see me start to move from a size 3 sable to using a slightly bigger, twice the size, size 6 sable, which you can load up with a lot more water and you can really blend the colours that you've put down together and then move it around using the brush. So for this bit, I'm trying to actually blend the colours that I put on a little bit more. There you go, a bit more transferring the colour across to that section. I'm trying to blend the colours a bit more so that I don't get the, the pen staining the paper in the background. And I figure the more I work over a certain section and really try and work it with the water and blend those colours in with the water, there's less chance of a stain being left behind underneath the colour. So as I'm progressing through the painting, I'm getting much more of a kind of a feel and intuition for just how much of the pigment I need to actually put on the paper and activate with the brush. And hopefully you've noticed that I'm beginning to put a little bit less on because the colors are so reactive and so bright a little bit goes a long way. So as the picture progresses, it's definitely becoming more of a sort of less is more scenario as far as the painting is concerned. These are very reactive. They do look a little bit brighter and a bit more colorful um, when they're wet, but I think that is true of most watercolors, whether you use pans or tubes. When it's wet, it, the, the color just seems utterly vibrant. And then as it dries, um, I suppose saying it dulls a little bit is not perhaps the best way to describe it, but it, it gets a little bit more matte and, and maybe not quite as bright in the colour stakes, but this is watercolour, so it's still lovely pigmented bright colour. So if you recall the reference photo that I showed at the beginning of the video, you'll have noticed that some of the petals were almost a flat colour, but some have that lovely streaky linear quality that crocus petals have got. And I haven't forgotten about that. It's just what I'm doing is I'm laying down a kind of a base 
coat across the petals first of all. And I'm also beginning to notice that there are a couple of patches where the pens have stained the, uh, the paper underneath. And I'm thinking that probably the best way to combat that is to go in with maybe a second coat of color after I finish these first coats of color. So I haven't forgot about the line work and I've got that in mind, but I'm getting my base colors down first instead of getting really obsessed with the detail and the very, very fine parts of what this painting is gonna offer. By the way, have you noticed that I'm still just using two markers to get all of these different shades and each of these different tones of purple on here? So I'm just using the magenta and the violet together. I think there's sometimes a temptation when you've got a lot of markers and a lot of colors at your disposal to overuse and use a few too many um, colors. And sure, you might be looking at this and thinking, well, I could introduce maybe an extra color into this, maybe a blue into parts of the shadows. And I think that's a legitimate question to ask. Uh, I just don't have enough blues in this range to use them. But you should always wonder about that. And, you know, am I using too many colors? Am I actually using, you know, an okay amount of colors? Am I overcomplicating things by adding too much? And you can just see me doing a small part on the edge of this petal and, you know, getting the two colors on, blending them together, trying to leave a little bit of a white edge between the underside of the petal and the inside of the petal. But here you see me going straight in now. There's a bit of time lapse as I do the second layer. So what I'm trying to do here is put on some extra color, enrich the colors that I've already got there, change the tones of some, so some have more magenta and a little bit less violet, but also, I, you know, I admit it, I'm on a bit of a rescue mission to apply a bit more paint, move it around and to try to hide <laughs> some of those streaky bits that I could see after my first pass at the, the colors. So at this point, I've used so much purple, I need a little bit of break from the purple. So I introduced some yellow. I'm gonna do the bit in the middle where all of the kind of like polony bits would be. So I'm using cadmium yellow hue here to do the base yellow on there. It's lovely bright yellow. And then I'm going to use the magenta, just really fine, tiny little bits of this using the finest edge of the, um, the brush tip to try and add some slightly more shadowed areas when I blend them together with the brush. So I'm putting it on super sparingly because it could totally overpower the yellow if I put on too much. And then I put on some water and I start to blend the yellow, activate the yellow, move the yellow around, and then sort of just move it close enough to tease some of that um, magenta into the yellow. So hopefully I'm getting a kind of a rich orange, which will be the shadow for uh, the yellow areas. And where it's a bit too strong, I get a bit of clean water on my brush, and then I come back in and I try and blend those two areas together. So I'm getting the yellow activated and just gently introducing it um, to the kind of magenta bits, I'm getting that nice orange there. So it's got a bit of depth. And then I notice this bit that I hadn't quite done earlier. So a couple of little dabs of color and then activate that again using the brush and the water. So I've got that shadow at the sort of near the base, near the bottom of where the petals are all growing together. So I'm getting close to that stage where I'm gonna procrastinate a little bit and just find some little bits that I think I need to touch up because I'm kind of putting off the line work bit because it is so fine and so delicate. I'm a little bit worried the, um, it's the high risk part of the painting and I might end up ruining things if I'm not careful. So that's why you can see me adding a little bit more color this side. I'm you know, darkening it up, adding a bit more tone. But really, we all know that I'm putting off doing the fine line work because that's gonna be the trickiest part of the painting. But I can put it off no longer. So here you can see, I'm going to use the sort of transferring the color method and I'm going to actually just put a bit of marker on the paper add water to it. It's going to be like a palette on the paper. And so I get some water on the brush, mix it around, and now I've got magenta on my brush. And I'm going to put some of that fine line work in, those little lines you see on a crocus petal. And I'm trying to flick and curl them up using this brush. And this brush is a bit of a customized brush. It's a synthetic triple one brush, uh, Winsor Newton Cotman range, I think. And it's lost so many bristles over the years that it's not even a triple one anymore. It's even finer than that. So I'm using that one to put in these lines. And I'm starting with the magenta first. It's not dark enough. Um, if you see the reference photo, you can tell that it's not dark enough, but I'm starting with that as a base. And I'm gonna make it darker where I need to in a minute. So again, I'm putting a little bit more color on the paper, using the paper as my palette, 
activate it with water, and then the colors on the brush. So you can see me here using this incredibly fine brush to just put in some of these lovely veiny bits that you see on a crocus. They're the thing that attracts you to it, but when you have to paint them, gosh, they are quite daunting <laughs> looking at them on the reference photo and thinking, oh, how am I gonna do all of that? So it required a lot of concentration, my glasses on, and a super steady hand in order to try and get these guys put on here. You might be thinking, why didn't I use the fine tip of the watercolor marker? Because they are dual tips, so they've got a brush tip on one end and a fine tip on the other end. Um, but that tip wasn't fine enough to do the kind of lines, the vein work that you can see me doing here. Uh, and if I try to do them using the, the really, really fine edge of the brush tip, I might have been able to get them super fine, but I would have had to concentrate even more than I'm doing now. And plus, they would be raw pigment, so they would be very, very dark and very, very bright um, colours on there. And it would be difficult for me to affect them using a brush and water without making those lines even thicker. So I knew I was going to have to bite the bullet and do this using a brush. But I just thought what I would do is put the blobs of colour on the paper and then transfer the colour once I'd got it on the brush. And that actually worked a lot nicer than I thought. I thought it was going to be a little bit trickier. I thought the lines were going to be a bit thicker and fatter and blurred. So I was kind of pleased with the way that they actually turned out. Now you might be looking at the, the patches of colour that are now on the paper, the palette that I'm using, um, and be like, oh no, he's ruined it. Oh, what's he doing with that? Oh, it's going to completely ruin the whole picture. But it's not, because if you see the pencil lines that are just on there, quite faint, that's the actual um, size of the picture that I'm doing because I've got a, like a card mount so I know exactly how much of the picture space I need here and what I don't need, what's going to be covered by a card mount or a frame. Uh, and that's the part you can see me using. So don't worry, <laughs> I did think this through before I started it. And that particular patch, and indeed the patch above where I add other colours, you can see me adding violet now, that's not going to get seen if this picture ever gets displayed in a picture frame. So it's all right. Whew. Right, so I started with magenta, but now you can see me putting violet on as part of my palette on the paper. And I've mixed that, I've got that on the brush, and I'm now transferring that violet and I'm going over part of the magenta lines that I've already done. So this is like a second layer of color going on, but also a darker color. So it's not gonna be super, super dark because of course I'm adding water to it and it's getting a little bit diluted, but it's gonna make those lines darker and hopefully make those lines show up more against those petals. And I kind of noticed doing this that the crocus seems to have three quite fat, solid coloured petals. And then in between those, three petals that are paler with the, the, the vein work, these fine lines, really, really show up a lot. And I don't know if that's true of all crocuses or just the pictures that I took. But it seemed to be a, a really cool kind of effect. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't have to do this vein work on every single petal. So here you can see me, this part is shadowed. You can see by the sort of wash of color I put on near the start of the painting. So this means that the lines, the veins within this shadow are going to be darker. So you can see me going over those quite a bit with this um, violet on my brush. I also add a little, little bits of violet over some of the magenta lines there, just almost like fading it out towards the top. I'm gonna to leave the lines at the top and not add any magenta to those, sorry, any violet to those, because I want those to stay quite faint. But now you can see me getting some more violet on my brush and working in from the other side. So putting those fine lines in with this triple one brush, and I'm just going to work again across the area which is shadowed, which would make the veins a bit darker but I'm gonna go for slightly broken lines and just very gently dabbing in a few lines here. Oh, make a bit of a meal of that one. So a little bit of tissue hand to just sort of dab it, any kind of mistakes, get it dabbed as quick as possible. But I'm not worried about that, it's looking okay. And I had a little bit of last minute noodling with the fine brush, but stop on that. I'm happy with that, that's looking okay. So I'm mixing more violet on the brush and now I'm just doing the darker vein work on this this last sort of petal that needs it. So again, I'm trying to curve my strokes slightly from the top and just gently curve them downwards and towards the left as I'm bringing that brush down because the sort of curved lines or the directional lines would give you the feel that that petal is curved. If you went for just straight up lines, it's gonna give it a very different look. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's gonna look very different. 
So here you can see me just adding a little bit of color on this bottom edge here, which I felt needed a little bit of magenta just to show that that petal is growing out from there. And here you can see me doing the stalk. So this is a little bit of sap green slapped on and then going straight in with a bit of the violet. So I'm hoping these two will blend and make a sort of a greeny brown color for the stalk. And I like the idea of using some of the, the color that's already existing on the flower, either in the background or as part of the stalk to make things darker so that the whole picture will come together and kind of blend together and have this feel of being a complete picture. And here you can see me on working and uh, adding some highlights. I wasn't happy with how white some of the edges were. So I'm just doing a very simple thing here. I'm adding a bit of water, I'm blending some of the color, and I got some tissue on my other hand, and I'm just blotting the color as I activate it. So I'm lifting it off the page. It doesn't give you a bright white highlight, but it will remove the paint and give you a highlight, which is I think what the edges of these petals just about needed paint wouldn't have given me the same kind of effect and wouldn't have been a flat white. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this full step-by-step -step process of how to paint the crocus. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. And if you subscribe, you won't miss my painting of all three of the crocus flowers. And please don't forget to like and share. Thank you so much for watching.